Hello, in this presentation we will continue explaining robot image based visual servoing. Actually, in this presentation we will focus on how to apply this method to control a robot manipulator. It is therefore a video continuation of our previous video. In this case, the aims of this video are to understand the problem of uh, control with visual feedback and also, also known as image-based visual servoing using a robot manipulator with an eye in hand configuration. So for this purpose we will review visual servoing with a camera free configuration that we saw in our previous presentation. Later I will mention some methods to detect features on images and how to implement the kinematic control law for the robot manipulator using those features. At the end we will see some examples. The problem statement is very similar to the one that we saw in our previous presentation, with the main difference that now the camera will be held by a robotic arm, and therefore our objective now is to generate a kinematic control law for the robotic arm. As before, the robot will be able to observe some characteristics from its current configuration using the camera, so the main objective is to find out the configuration that brings the robot to observe a reference image and how to get to it. As we saw in our previous presentation, to implement visual feedback control we establish a linear relationship between the velocities of the visual characteristics in the image plane and the linear and angular velocities of the camera's reference frame. The controller is indeed a proportional controller that minimizes the error in the visual characteristics um, uh, frame with respect to the reference uh, image and determines the camera linear and angular velocities so that the error converges to zero. Visual feedback control techniques require algorithms to detect features in images. Typically we will use corners but in general these are points in the image that have some nice properties that make them clearly distinguishable and suitable for being used for later tracking using as much uh, or a smaller uh, image region instead of the full image. This type of procedure greatly speeds up the uh, computation time uh, of the image precision techniques. For detecting visual characteristics, I recommend to use some of the algorithms implemented in the well-known OpenCV library. These are techniques that have been widely used and accepted by the artificial vision community for many reasons. Specifically here I mentioned some of the algorithms such as the Harris Corners Detector or Shitomashi's Corner Detector. The later actually improves the function to evaluate uh, candidate points for tracking. Shift points introduce as an improvement that they are invariant to scale and rotation, while the previous methods were only invariant to rotations. Surf point represent a computational uh, improvement over shift points and the fast corner detector, it is a significantly uh, faster detector than the previous ones, but is not very robust against high noise levels. I recommend uh, you, you read uh, the OpenCV documentation and also related papers to learn about these techniques or details, the insight uh, about uh, these techniques. To determine the joint movement of the robot, we need to relate the observed velocities of the points in the image plane with the joint robot velocities. So we need to compute the Jacobian matrix shown in the formula highlighted in the orange. This matrix will depend on the coordinates of the points, S, their depth, Z, the observed and, uh, the, observed and, the, and the reference points obviously, and also the current robot configuration cube. To compute this Jacobian matrix, we will split our problem in several parts, since I believe this is much easier to understand in this way. So, first, we have a relationship that I have already explained about the speed of the points with respect to the linear and angular velocities of the camera's reference frame. On the other hand, these speeds will depend on the linear and angular speeds of the end effector frame denoted here as v6 and omega6. Thus, the camera velocities can be computed from known expressions of the 3D spatial movement to obtain the speeds of a reference frames expressed in another reference frame. 
In this sense, we will obviously need to know the homogeneous transformation matrix between both frames. Finally, the end effector speeds can be co computed from the jo uh, robot joint speeds using the robot Jacobian matrix, but they need to be expressed with respect to the end effector frame, and therefore we can apply the same ideas as before to compute the robot Jacobian with respect to the end effector frame, as you can see here. Therefore, once the relationships between the joints velocities of the robot and the observed velocities of the points in the image are known, we establish a proportional control law that corrects the error between the observed and the reference characteristic. To do this, we must compute the pseudo-inverse of the corresponding Jacobi matrix and apply the expression highlighted in orange here, being lambda the gain of the controller. Once again, we can say that the convergence of the error will be exponential if the depths are known in the vicinity of the final configuration and obviously in the absence of noisance disturbances or non-model dynamics, that is, in an ideal world. In this example, we will first analyze the case of a pure rotation, a robot with six degrees of freedom, which actually corresponds to the ABB IRB 100 model, 140 model uh, that we have already seen in, uh, in our previous examples. This, uh, the robot is positioned in an initial configuration as indicated in the figure on the left and observes some points um, in the image as shown in the image on the right, the black crosses. After applying the proposed visual feedback control, we can see that the robot converges to a configuration so that the observed points match with the reference points marked here with the blue crosses in the figure on the right. In fact, the configuration to which it should have converged, it should have been the one with all joints uh, taking the value of zero, but since this configuration is singular, because joint four and six are coincident, so it has converged to a different configuration which takes, uh, joint 6 takes the value of 11 degrees, approximately 11 degrees, while uh, joint, uh, the fourth joint takes the value of approximately minus 11 degrees, which corresponds to actually the same position and orientation for the camera. The estimation of the depth has been assumed to be known here, and also the detection of the visual, uh, visual characteristics is also assumed to be known because we know the model of the camera and uh, the robot does not include any kind of error or noise. Here we have a second example in which we uh, now start in a more complex situation that requires both a translation and a rotation. Since the estimated uh, depth values such as um, the detected points, the correspondence between the points, the robot model, everything is perfect, this, this example also does not represent any problem for the controller and converges to the correct solution. In a real situation, this example would probably have much more complex to, to be solved, but these, all these aspects are beyond the scope of this presentation. In this presentation, I have introduced a kinematic control with visual feedback. Thank you very much.